What's going on guys? Welcome back. Hope you're doing great as we're back with yet another video just for you. Before we move on, I'd like to ask you guys to please consider subscribing to the channel if you haven't already, as it really helps us create these videos. And while you're down there, don't forget to click the notification bell so you don't miss any future uploads. Well, without further ado, here's our video on major habits of one of the world's rarest personality types, INFPs, the qualities that define them that are actually not found in others. Make sure to watch this video till the end as we'll also be revealing some of the world's most famous INFPs which may include some people you had no idea were of this type. Now first of all, before we start on the fact, we should have a recap of what the personality actually is as it turns out the mediator or INFP is a personality type as described by the famous Myers-Briggs personality indicator test. This test was developed by mother and daughter Catherine Briggs and Isabel Briggs Myers right in the early 20th century, which they have based on the theories of the famous Swiss psychologist Carl Jung. According to them, each person is judged based on four different categories. According to the official test body, the Myers-Briggs Foundation, these categories are sensation, intuition, feeling, and thinking. The test, which consists of a set of questions answered by our own introspection, determines the category a person falls into within these four traits and gives a comprehensive result, indicating the personality. And as you guys can tell by now, INFP is one of those total 16 possible personalities. Now, the letters actually represent a category a person falls in based on each characteristic. And for INFP, INFPs, the four letters, as some of you might have guessed, stand for introverted, intuitive, feeling, and judging, and perceiving, the defining traits of an INFP. Now, before we go any further, I'd like to ask if any of you guys have ever taken the test. If you have, what were your results, and did you find them accurate? Please let us know down below. Now, without further ado, here are eight defining traits of the INFP personality, also known as as mediators or healers. 1. Unsuccessful escapists. One of the things that defines an INFP is their ideal worldview of things. They cannot be content in the way things are in the world and would prefer living in a place safe from its injustice. In other words, they have a strong drive to escape somewhere far away and start a new life free from worryment. This does create some issues as being idealists. They are also attached to their homes and friends and so have a hard time leaving. And most often don't end up leaving at all, but keep yearning silently. Number two, adoption wish. Building up on our previous point, it is no secret that mediators are deeply sensitive people and can often be hurt by the words of close ones, especially family. And more often than not, they find themselves wondering how things could have been if they were born in a different, more caring family. Do you guys ever find yourself wondering this? If yes, it doesn't necessarily mean you're an INFP. Because of them, it's more about wanting to be safer than any. Anything. Number three, writers who don't write. Being creative by nature, INFPs are almost always drawn to literature and love to read and explore. It's no surprise that some of the world's most famous writers were INFPs, but they also suffer a curse along with their natural gift with words, and that is not being able to write, which can be because of many reasons. Most commonly, it's because of their self-doubting nature or having a mind that's far too scattered to put pen to paper, and as a result, even though they always wish to be writers, most of them have a hard time with it. Number four, loads of coping mechanisms. If you've ever known an INFP, you know that they have some, let's just say issues, which can range anywhere from anxiety and self-doubt to full-blown overthinking and depression. But being the idealists they are, they can often find ways to deal with these instead of actually fixing the issues, and so are no strangers to coping mechanisms. Writing lists, binge-watching TV, making art, or wandering around town, there are a million things a INFP will do to distract themselves. 
Number five, the road not taken. Robert Frost and his poetry are some of the best representation of the INFP way of thinking, as they too are deeply in tune with nature and affected by the slightest things. And so, like one of the most famous poems, INFPs also prefer taking more exotic paths, both literally and in other ways. They like a sense of adventure and hate regularity, and so they rarely, if ever, take the same path every day. Instead, having a cycle of paths they randomly select from. Number six, that one show. Now, it's not an INFP thing to have one show that you watch way more than the rest, but with them, the attachment and reliance can run a lot deeper. Where other people watch other stuff and come back to their show at times, INFPs don't watch anything else, and the shows end up becoming one of their coping mechanisms. But it's still not limited to just bad times, as the shows mean a lot to them and are a part of all aspects of their lives. Number seven, attachment issues. If there's one thing an INFP can do, it's to learn to care about something. From friends to pets and colleagues, they are very caring and empathetic people and end up having a lot of importance for these things. However, this also makes them prone to feel empathy for everyone, and so as a result, they have a hard time killing animals or throwing out old toys. Number eight, the perfectionist procrastinator. Last but not least, we have one of the INFP's biggest contradictions that makes them different from the rest, and that is being a perfectionist while being extremely procrastinating. As idealists, they always prefer things a certain way, and anything less just doesn't cut it. However, because of that, they have a hard time allowing mistakes and end up not doing things altogether. All in all, they are very caring and sensitive people, and this combined with the introversion defines an INFP. With all that done, guys, what do you think? Could you be an INFP, or are you reminded of someone you know, a friend, a teacher, or maybe a celebrity? Speaking of celebrities, did you know that some of the biggest writers and actors are actually INFPs? That's right, these guys are rare, but they can get pretty famous, too. People like Johnny Depp, Alicia Keys, Kurt Cobain, and even John Lennon, to famed writers like J.R.R. Tolkien, the one who brought us Lord of the Rings, and Shakespeare himself, are all INFPs. So, that should give you a pretty good idea of what makes INFPs tick and sets them apart from other personalities. And guys, that's all for today. Hope you enjoyed watching this video. If you did, as always, be sure to leave a like, and I'll see you guys in the next one.